بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so last time starting with um, our quran session allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, in the last ayah that we were reading allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was introducing uh, isa alayhi salam why is my computer slowing down uh that uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was uh, through jibril alayhi salam jibril alayhi salam came to, came to see maryam alayhi salam who was praying and uh, he told her that you're going to have a son his name is going to be masih isa ibn maryam his name is going to be messiah jesus and mary he is going to be honored in this world and the hereafter and will be the one who is brought close uh this is uh uh like i told you uh, we are now going to dive into some of the details behind isa alayhi salam and his life and his mission in, in the upcoming ayat uh these ayat uh came down it is said that uh, there was a delegation that came from during the lifetime of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a delegation from yemen um who came down to visit rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yemen had a lot of christians at that time christians and jews as well and uh that delegation came and visited rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in masjid an nabawi the the prophetic masjid and uh these ayat came down around that time where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the details behind the beliefs of the christians and the stories and uh, and to teaching him about yahya alayhi salam john the baptist and zakaria and mary and and imran and all of these things and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not know these things before as you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that you didn't know these things and uh, this is the first time you're hearing them as evidence that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not learn this from the christians or the jews allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him with this information as a proof of his prophethood right that makes sense to you guys so moving on uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to introduce uh uh continues to introduce to maryam alayhi salam um who so Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yukallimu an-nas al-mahd. Uh can everybody go on mute? Yes sir. Oh my gosh. Let me see who's not on mute. Hold on sir. Okay. I think we're good now. Okay. Uh so continuing on uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling uh Maryam alayhi salam uh that Jesus will speak in the cradle and uh as we will learn in later stories actually in surah Maryam this is detailed the the time of uh how uh, uh Maryam alayhi salam she brought Isa alayhi salam with her in her arms um and uh, everybody pointed and blamed her for uh for committing an indecent act and she and she didn't she was uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told her to not speak and she pointed to Isa alayhi salam and he started to speak while he was in the cradle basically he he was a baby and he started to speak so uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already t- telling uh Maryam alayhi salam preparing her that he will speak in his cradle and he will ob- obviously speak in his maturity wa kahlan wa min as-salihin and he will be from the most righteous of people isa alayhi salam is going to be extremely righteous qalat rabbi anna anna yakunu li walad she said similar to how zakaria alayhi salam said when allah when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the good news that you're going to have a son similarly maryam alayhi salam is similarly saying she said how can i have a son 
ولم ينسسني بشر and no man has touched me i have not been with a man how can i have a child qala and uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said kadhalik this is how it is again you see the same theme as uh, the story of uh, zakaria alayhi salam when he was uh, praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child um, and then uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you will have a child and uh, he was like how how can this be and he said kadhalik this is how it is this Allahu yakhluqu ma yasha. Allah creates whatever he wills. This is a very very powerful message against the um the belief of Christianity. Uh not it's it's very logical that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting over here in this ayah that just because uh maryam alayhi salam was pregnant with isa alayhi salam without having been with a man just because of that doesn't mean that isa alayhi salam is not a creation of allah and he is god and he is the son of god because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered uh, uh maryam alayhi salam to become pregnant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying I can create whatever I will. I create whatever however I will, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates whatever he will. So just because something is out of the ordinary does not mean that it is not a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Uh for example, if aliens come down to earth and visit us are we going to stop believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create whatever he wills however he wills we should not be surprised we should not put bounds on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability and allah protect us and he he uh he uh walahu uh, mathalu al-a'la and for him is the best of examples okay uh so this is a very important ayah right here um that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells uh, Maryam alayhi salam who herself was surprised that Allah creates whatever he wills idha qada amran if he wills for a thing to happen idha qada amran if he wills fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun then he says to it be and it is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say be this is a uh, this is idiomatic meaning that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all 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 he has to do is for something to will uh, is is for will for something to happen and it happens does not make it not his creation it is all his creation and it does not get a separate treatment from the rest of the creation okay wa idha qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun and when he decrees for something to happen then all all he does to it as uh, he says kun bi fa yakun and it becomes wa yual okay and then continue and continuing to introduce isa alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling uh, maryam alayhi salam wa yuallimuhu alkitab and allah will teach him the book what was the book at that time it was the torah right and in jeel so as we will see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling maryam alayhi salam that he will speak when he would be in the cradle he would be a righteous person um and he allah will teach him the book and he will teach him the wisdom um what torah to wal injil and he will teach him the torah and he will teach him the gospel and we talked briefly about what the gospel is it's the word of god that's what it means and isa alayhi salam the other name is the word of god right because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says be and he was okay uh one one little side note for you guys allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he talks about teaching a prophet the book always it is followed by hikmah wisdom it is not enough for you to just recite the book even if you just read its translation and understand it that is not enough you have to teach the wisdom 
behind the book. You have to know how to interpret it. You need to understand what is important, what are the important pieces from it. And as you know, Quran is not a linear book. It's not a chapter book. It doesn't have episode one and then episode two and episode three. For example, Bible is organized that way. If you look at the if you look at the Torah, the Old Testament, it starts from you know the story of uh, the creation of the earth and then the story of Adam alayhi salam, then moves to the story of Noah, Nuh alayhi salam, moves to the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, then moves to the story of Joseph and most the story of Musa alayhi salam. So that it's very episodic. I don't know if you've ever looked into the Old Testament, but that's how it is. Quran is not like that. It is not a linear book. There's information by design, by design by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, it is weaved in, in different places in the Quran um, so that you are not treating it as a reference book only. It is a book of guidance. And when you, when we're discussing things, just like I'm discussing things, you know, I was talking about something else and now I'm talking about something else, which is important, which is highlighting back to what I'm already talking about, right? So a Quran does this, right? This is the style of the Quran. So you can't just take passages out. You have to understand the whole thing. That is part of the wisdom of the hikmah. The other hikmah is the, uh, the, obviously you have to spend a lot of time contemplating the Quran as you understand and read tafasir if you really want to understand it and then continue to study all your life, spend the rest of your life just trying to contemplate the deeper meanings of the Quran, uh, highly recommend. It's very important. It's a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you actually believe it's a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't read and understand it, then do you really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me personally. So oh, if, you not, if, you, if you have no connection to the Quran, you are just providing lip service to Islam. And you're just saying, I'm a Muslim just because, and even though you have a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've never read it. So this is why we emphasize the reading of the Quran in, in the academy. Okay, going uh, going off my rant there, uh, talking about hikmah. So there's hikmah in the kitab, in, in the book. But there's also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching additional wisdom, is inspiring the messengers with additional wisdom. And that is evident from, for example, um, a hadith, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was taught certain things that are not necessarily found in the ayat of the Quran. They're indicative in the Quran, but the details of it are with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, there are stories that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that are not necessarily in the Quran or the details behind them are not in the Quran. Not just stories, I'm just giving you that as an example. It could be a lot of things. There is a lot of wisdom that was taught outside of the book per se, okay? If you were to divide it. So uh, even if you look at Musa alayhi salam and the commandments that came down and the law that came down, the Torah, which is the law that came down, if you talk to uh, Jewish people, they will tell you there are a, there's a there's a large sect of Jews. Not all of them uh, believe it. Some of the modern people don't believe it, but the older ones they do. There there are there are two types of Torah. One is the book, the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch, and the second one is called the Oral Torah. The Oral Torah. The Oral Torah is called the Mishnah if I remember correctly, uh, it's called the oral Torah. It, those, are, those are pieces of wisdom that are not found directly in the Torah. So that is like the hadith of how to do certain things. Like for example, how do Jewish people know to, for example, wear the yarmulke always, like where does that come from? Or why do they grow out their sideburns really long? Um, why do they wear the certain things that they wear? Why do they worship the way they do? All of those details are not necessarily found in the Torah, similar to Islam. Not all the details of how to pray, how to, how to pray Salah are in the Quran. They're not there. They, they're found in the Hadith. So similarly, there's oral Torah uh, that, that has those details, okay? Um, hope you have any questions on this. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Isa alayhi salam the book and the wisdom. 
Any Fair questions enough. on this? Yeah, quick question. So yeah. Do we know uh, who wrote the, the oral Torah? Yeah, the rabbis did. The rabbis did. Similarly to the, uh, to the Hadith tradition, um, you know, which was compiled after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, years after, right? They were compiled and authenticated. As you know, the rabbis, uh, as the Quran calls them, Rabbaniyin, the, the rabbis, they were the ones who were writing down the Torah and passing it down from generation to generation. Actually, those hadith, the oral Torah hadith, they are all available online. You can look it up. You can Google for oral Torah and you can see, I believe the book is called Mishnah and you'll see like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of statements. However, obviously those statements are just statements. It doesn't say, those statements don't say such and such person told me that such and such person told me that such and such person told me all the way back to Musa alayhi salam. It doesn't work that way, right? They didn't capture any of that. They just captured the text. They didn't capture the authenticity and the chain of narrations like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us Muslims with, with the authenticity and a chain of narration that goes back, which you can validate and verify that this is an authentic hadith, right? That doesn't exist in Judaism. Okay, thank you. That, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, 100%. By the way, am I sharing my screen? No, actually, oh. I, I asked Yeah, you guys should before. have stopped me. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I guess you guys were, you guys are enjoying the lesson so much. You don't even need the screen. No, we were listening. So, you know, yeah, sometimes I, I learn more just by listening and not reading at the same time. It's just, it's just visual reference. Actually, yeah. uh, if you, if you learn when you have, when you have a visual aid, you don't even looking at the aid, just those images itself, it helps, helps you with memory yeah. retention, right? they become, they become mnemonic. Okay. Uh, oral Torah. Let's see, let's go to our trusty Wikipedia. Oh, my computer is really slow. I don't know what is going on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Oral Torah. And sometimes I go on these tangents just so to educate you and connect you back to our tradition of Judaism and Christianity. It is part of our tradition. It's very important for us to understand that uh, yeah. and, not, and not patronize them or otherize those people, they're part of our tradition, okay? Uh, our Mus us Muslims were supposed to be the unifiers of the traditions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came from Adam alayhi salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. Uh, it is called Mishnah. Yep, yeah, it is called Mishnah. Uh, any, anyway, you can look it up. There's, it's very interesting. If you read it a little bit, you'll see, ah, this, these are like a hadith of uh, uh, Musa alayhi salam, yeah? Yeah. Okay, anyways, moving on. My computer is crawling. Uh, Allah is it only today or is it always? It's just like... happening today. Okay. Actually, I upgraded my Mac to, uh, to the new beta version. Um, and I think that is what's causing it. I think I'm recording it, so it's slowing it down. Anyways, uh, continuing on. Let's see. Uh, if this keeps happening, I might turn off the recording or something. I can't switch the screen. Okay. Oh, come on. Bismillah. Nope, doesn't like it. I don't know what's going on. Just bear with me, guys. Zoom is taking up significant energy. Anyways, all right, moving on. Can I drop and join back? Can I, can I do that? Yeah, we'll be here. Okay. Let me do that real quick.
Okay, I'm back. It is Zoom that was causing the slowness. Uh, I restarted it. Hopefully, it'll be fine. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. And it's sharing the screen and everything? Yes. Yeah, much faster now, alhamdulillah. Oh, good, alhamdulillah. Okay. All right, going back to the Quran. Uh, all right, so now you guys understand hikmah is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching the messengers the wisdom, which is additional information than what's in the book, okay? That is specifically designated for, you could say, the messengers initially, which then messengers then narrate to, uh, to the people. It's actually, it's actually so amazing, the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think about this sometimes. You know, if you just have the Quran, you're like, eh, I don't need the messenger anymore. He gave me the message, I got it, I'm done, right? The importance of the messenger, if it was just the book, dilutes. You know what I'm saying? But the Quran, if you look at it, it continues to connect the book, the, what you read with Rasulullah with his life, with his seerah, with hints of things that you're supposed to do, but where do you find the detail? It is with the messenger. Then, then the messenger explains the detail. It is such a beautiful uh, weave of the book and the wisdom. It is subhanallah, subhanallah. It is amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates the messengers by connecting them with intertwined with the book. Al-Kitab wal-Hikmah. It is just amazing. Well, Allah, I'm getting goosebumps just, just talking about it. And you guys hopefully understand what I'm trying to convey. Sheikh, does that make sense to you? I don't know if he's on. Yeah, 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 absolutely it does. I think, you know, to your point, it, it brings more context mm -hmm. and more relevant context. And it just, you know, when you're reading the Quran, right? And, um, you know, you've also read the Hadith and, um, mm -hmm. Like you said, it, it, it all kind of fits together, just like a tessellation, you know, it all yep. sort of makes sense together. I mean, in and of itself, the Quran is, that's all that's needed, right? That, that is the message, but the, the, the hadith and, and knowing the sunnah of Rasulullah, it just adds more context that kind of brings wow. it all alive. Yeah, I would actually beg to argue Quran is not the only thing needed. Quran and the Hadith are needed together. The Sunnah is needed together to really understand the deen. Quran itself does not answer some of the questions. Quran itself has arrows pointing back to Rasulullah. Listen to him, talk to him, get the details from him. It's all over the Quran. So Quran points back to the Sunnah. Sunnah points back to the Quran and both are essential parts of the deen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this was true, as you can see, with the Torah as well. The first book that was revealed, uh, if, if you were to uh, uh, think about it that way. It's not the first book, obviously. Ibrahim a.s. was also given pamphlets, as the Quran tells us. Anywho, uh, moving on. Um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to introduce uh, uh, Isa a.s. to Maryam a.s. and tells her, he will be sent as a messenger to the children of Israel. Who is Israel, by the way? Quick pop quiz. Who is Israel? The Jewish people. Who is, who is, Israel is a person. Who is Israel? Because you're saying the children of Israel. So who is Israel? You guys don't know? I've told you guys before. Come on, old, old, old students. Rings a bell? Israel is the name of Yaqub alayhi salam, the father of Yusuf alayhi salam. He, his name was Israel. So the children of Israel are descendants of Yaqub alayhi salam and his progeny. Okay? The 12 tribes of Israel, they all were children of Yaqub alayhi salam. Remember the 12 sons of Yaqub alayhi salam that became into tribes. 
those. So when we say Bani Israel, it means the children of Israel, children of Yaqub. So Jesus was specifically sent to as a messenger to the, the children of Israel, which were the Jewish people at that time. Ah, another point to note here. He was he was he Rasul for everyone in the world? No. All of the messengers, Musa alayhi salam onward down to Isa alayhi salam all the way were specifically messengers and that Sharia was specific for the Jewish people. In contrast, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent for all of mankind. He was the only messenger that was sent for all of mankind. Okay, very, very important thing for you to remember. So Jesus alayhi salam was a messenger to Bani Israel Okay, and then uh, the introduction ends in the middle of this ayah right here, uh, the introduction of Isa alayhi salam, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing Isa alayhi salam, and then now in the, in the style of the Quran, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, his style, right in the middle of the ayah, the context switches, okay, here uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking to Maryam alayhi salam, right, and suddenly in the middle of the ayah, now Jesus is speaking. I have come to you with a sign min rabbikum from your Lord. I have come with you with miracles, essentially. The sign, aya in Arabic, means miracle. Okay? Aya is a sign and a miracle. So, anni, I, in fact, have come to you all, O children of Israel, with miracles from my Lord. I will create from you from clay a form of a bird. I know we're running a little bit over. We're just going to go a little bit over if, if, if that's okay and finish this ayah. Uh, the very, very interesting things in here that uh, uh, Isa is, is telling the, the Jews at that time that I have come to you with miracles. One of my miracles would be that I will I will craft from you a bird for, for, that is uh, made from clay. And then I will blow in that bird. And it will actually become a bird. So he will make a clay bird form and he will blow it in it and it will become an actual bird. But then he says, Beautiful. What, a, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us these little things that sometimes get past us, we don't notice them. What did Jesus say? Am I doing it? He's saying, yes, I am doing it by the permission of Allah. I will, I'm only able to do these things because Allah has permitting me to do it. He has enabled me to do it. Takes his miracles and connects it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying, I am not God. I am not doing these miracles on my own. Allah the God, he is enabling me to be able to do this. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Okay, one uh, historical note for you, another connecting back to the Jewish history. Do you know that this miracle of Isa alayhi salam making a bird out of clay and then blowing in it and making it a real bird that flew away, uh, it is not found. This is not found in the Bible. So for a long time, long, long, long time, uh, over a thousand years, right? Uh, Christians were like, you, you Muslims are mentioning this miracle. It is not found anywhere in our texts. Where are you getting this from? Well, lo and behold, in 1945, uh, they discovered some scrolls near the Dead Sea called the Dead Sea Scrolls. And within the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1945, okay, then within the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found one of the scrolls uh, of non-canonical books that were meant to be part of the Bible, but they weren't, they're not canonically part of the Bible. And then I want to tell you what canonical means. Uh, so let's park that. Um, 
because you should understand what this means. Okay, so there were books that were not part of the canonical Bible. Uh, and uh, one of those books called the Gospel of Thomas was revealed. Guess what the Gospel of Thomas has in it? This story. Mm. Yes. You want to see? I can show you. Oh, come on. I am so sorry. Your computer is not cooperating with me today. It slowed down again. Uh, actually, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to do a lot of things here. Okay, so I'll just tell you. Go ahead and Google infancy of uh, Jesus in Gospel of Thomas, and then Jesus Alay Salam. He there's a bunch of miracles listed, and this story is in there. Amazing evidence back to the Quran. How did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam know this? Mm. Right again, it's evidence of his prophethood, uh, alayhi salam. Okay, and then the miracle Allah subhanahu wa taala, uh, Isa alayhi salam is again speaking to the to the to the Jewish people, and he is then saying, "Wa ubriu al akmaha wal abrasa," and I will heal the blind, and I will heal the leper. Um, and by the way, at this time, uh, uh, prophets are come with miracles, but miracles are very relevant to the time that the prophets come in. At this time, uh, uh, this is late. This is kind of 2000 years ago, right? This is 2000 years ago. Medicine at that time was at its peak. However, it could not cure. They didn't have a cure for leprosy. They couldn't, obviously medicine did not cure the dead and bring them back to life. So Isa alayhi salam came with these miracles that actually cured, uh, it, it, that had he had cures for some of the diseases by the permission of Allah. And I will raise the dead again, he says, by the permission of Allah. And I will inform you and tell you Bima ta'akulun, what you have eaten or what you will eat, wama ta'dakhirun, and what you are storing or hiding, fi buyutikum. And he will be able, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability with his permission to uh, uh, figure out what somebody had eaten without having been there and find out what somebody's storing inside their homes. In fi dhalika la aya, indeed. In, this, in, the, in these are signs lakum uh, for you in kuntum mu'minin if you indeed were believers. And we shall end it right here. Any questions? What does the canonical Bible mean? Ah, thank you for reminding me. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Canonical. Canon. A canonical, canon means uh, an order. Okay. By the way, have you heard of the Arabic word qanun? Have you? Qanun? No. I have an idea. no? Qanun is an Arabic word. It's very commonly used. Even in Urdu, it's used. In Hindi, it's used. It means uh, law. Okay, so canon comes from qanun. It means law. Canonical means so the word canon means uh, to put things in order as a set. It's a set of laws. So canonical Bible meaning books that were selected. So how many books are there in the Bible? The first one, for example, what are the books of the names of the Bible? I don't know them, all of them, but the first one is Genesis, right? Then it is Exodus, I believe right? The second or the third book, Exodus, contains the story of uh, Musa alayhi salam and the exodus of uh, Bani Israel uh, exiting from uh, the, the, the clasp of, of Pharaoh uh, onto the whole, toward the Holy Land. So that's Exodus. There's Leviticus. There's uh, Kings 1, Kings 2, which is Daud alayhi salam and Suleiman alayhi salam and onward and so, so on and forth, so forth. And then there is a uh, in the New Testament, there is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Revelations, and so many other books, right? Uh, there's Zalms, uh, the book of Zalms in it, right? Old Testament and the New Testament. All these books, these are called the canonical books of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Make sense? 
So the Gospel of Thomas that I was talking about earlier, which was not found, uh, that is not one of the books as a canonical book within the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. Uh, who, who decided that these books will become part of uh, these books will become part of uh, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Who decided that? You guys remember the Council of Nicaea, where, emp where the Roman emperor who converted to Christianity, he put a council together of a bunch of priests and rabbis, and they collected uh, the Christian priests and Christian priests at that time. He converted to Christianity, then he persecuted the Jews a lot. Um, anyways, he he uh, had a had a council where they where they decided these are the books that will belong in the Bible, and these are the books that will not be part of the the New Testament or the Old Testament. Okay, so that is when the Council of Nicaea, when it was decided, um, giving you a Quranic reference. What is what is the canonical Quran? Canonical Quran is the first surah is al-fatiha second is al-baqarah third which we're reading is al-imran so on and so forth until surah an-nas that is the canonical quran you understand that the order in which and the and the list of surahs so that is the canonical quran and just like similarly hopefully that answers your question